Hello guys, welcome to the video, and I know this is going to sound a bit odd, but um, I kind of made this video a bit early, and I wanted to put an update in front of the video, because honestly this video is going to be a bit long, and honestly if I put this at the end it would kind of be weird, and people might not see it, because um, let's just say we get a bit ranty, we get a bit sweary by the end, and again it's a long video, so I'm going to put the update at the start of it, because I saw a couple things that I felt people should know about if they haven't heard about it yet. Because, um, to a point we're gonna get to later, if you want to continue defending Nintendo when they do shitty things, and any consumer things, just remember that, um, their big game, their big, um, I'm gonna assume Christmas sale alongside Super Mario Odyssey, sorry, it's not gonna be a Christmas thing, it's gonna be, I don't know, a September thing, a school starter, I don't know. Anyway, I'm talking about Mario and Rabbid Kingdoms, whatever the fuck that thing is called that everyone is going apeshit over. Remember that um, Nintendo and Ubisoft, whoever the fuck decided to do this, is giving you a season pass on that game with story content being promised to you. So, you know, that and some gun skins and I'm sure another map of some sort, but a whole story bit. That's being cut out of the game right at the gate and being sold to you separately on a season pass because Nintendo decided to join the club of shitty people in uh, the coming years. So, you know, if you want to give them a pass, just remember they did that. Oh, and um, they did this earlier. You know, they've been doing season passes since, I don't know, the end of the Wii U, I suppose. I don't know, that Fire Emblems game. You know, the season pass that actually costs more than the base game itself. Yeah, we kind of remember that from earlier this year, you know, we kind of remember that they did that. So if you want to continue to give Nintendo a slide, well, just remember that they don't actually like you, and they're willing to chop out the content of their games that, you know, you always pay for because it's Nintendo-branded guarantee of quality. So, they'll just cut it out and sell it to you for a whole new price of the game. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> they aren't immune to the fucking AAA sectors, and I'm sure that if not by the end of the Switch's era, whatever the hell Nintendo's 10th gen console is going to be called, is going to have fucking loot boxes and microtransactions. You know, because they're getting on the boat, of course they want that cool, cool profit. You know, GTA 5 made 500 million in microtransaction money, so why the hell not Nintendo? So anyway, that was the update I wanted to put at the start of this video. Let's get to the actual thing I want to yell at Nintendo about, because fuck them when they do shitty things, just like any other company. Mandy, Mandy, man. How long has it been since we've done a Lent's Rant video about Nintendo? I'm honestly surprised I'm able to get it up to episode 4. I didn't think that this series would be going on so long, but then again. When Nintendo fucks up, it fucks up. And you might be wondering, four episodes, and what, I've done like eight Let's Rant videos and five of them were about Nintendo? Why are you doing so much Nintendo about this on this very rare series? Well, the short answer is that stereotypically I was a Nintendo kid. I grew up on the 64. I was first introduced to gaming on the Nintendo Entertainment System back in the 90s, and so on and so forth. So when you grow up with a company, when the company starts falling it to pieces, you want it to do better, so you cover it more than you'd say Naughty Dog, who, which I've honestly barely played any of their games. I think I played a one Crash spinoff, but then again, I wasn't, you know, introduced to it on the PSX. So, why are we doing this video here? Well, if you hadn't heard the news already, the thing that sparked my interest to do this video was the SNES Mini disaster that's been happening, and Nintendo's complete silence on the matter. Now, I, from all the news stories that you're hearing, Nintendo has not yet responded to why this is happening. I mean, we can always speculate on very good guesses as to why it's happening. I mean, lots of popular people, article writers, YouTube personalities, other, just other people who know more, they already have their theories about why this is happening. And they're very valid opinions. I mean, the whole thing is, you know, that Nintendo wants to create this artificial exclusivity between its customers and wants to hype up the demand even though it's not supplying the supply when the hype is at its greatest point. Like, you can't say to me that you're driving up this artificial demand to 
sell more of your products when the hype goes up and you're still not supplying the demand that you've artificially created. Like, that would at least make sense. But here, you're just hyping it up for nothing. For nothing. You got people who are wanting to give you money, but you aren't giving them product until, what, like three months after the fact? Like, there's a point where this stops making sense, and it stops making sense when it becomes the longest con in the world. I suppose the reason why I'm frustrated, and if you want to tell me, oh, you're so frustrated, oh, you're just being offended on other people's behalf, because, you know, personally, I don't care about the SNES Mini. I'm one of those people who, you know, very pro-emulator. I've emulated a lot of games on my series to do videos on them because it's just easier for me to do. But I also understand that, you know, some people are anti-emulator. They think it's too difficult. They think it's too problematic. They don't want to deal with the lack of guarantees. They just want to play the games. You know, that's fine. And that's why you say... That's why you can't say that just because you don't care, that means that everyone else shouldn't care. Because you know the people who fucking care are the people who went out and tried to pre-order, but then the pre-orders evaporated. You know, that's the thing. Those are the people who care. Those are the people for which it matters. And of course it fucking matters. You don't have to be saying that you're offended on other people's behalf when it's such an inherent screw-up on a company's behalf. And just for example, let's say, hypothetically, that Walmart was getting caught up in an alleged scandal where it was rewriting employee clock-in times, or having them clock out and still, you know, be working additional hours just because additional work showed up and then not paid them for that time. Or, you know, they're subcontracting a lot of people and putting them into specific categories so they can avoid paying their insurance and benefits. Or, you know, just invent a fucking scandal that makes sense about wages and insurance. It doesn't matter the specifics. The thing is that when that happens and people who aren't affected by it get offended, they aren't just getting offended on other people's behalf. They're not saying like, oh, you shouldn't say that joke because it could be racially insensitive or trans insensitive or self-harm insensitive. No, this is something that actually matters because it's a complete screw up. You know, this isn't something that could be offensive. Of course it's fucking offensive. It actually hurts people when this stuff happens. And it's an inherent screw-up. It's a deliberate screw-up. This isn't somebody just saying something and then someone being all like, Oh, it's so bad, it's so bad, why are you saying that? They know what they're doing, okay? And to the people who do that it does matter too, you can see that from plain as day. You don't have to make up a hypothetical offended person. They actually exist. So, why is this so frustrating? Well, I suppose that it's frustrating because if you are following my current series on old Mario games, we actually got up to a kind of, sort of, certain period with Nintendo in about the 2010-2013 era, probably tail end of the Wii, just getting into the Wii U era, where Nintendo was kind of not giving a shit in one particular area. And that area was the games themselves. This was the period where Paper Mario Sticker Star and Mario Party 9 came out, and I already ranted and raved on those games in an earlier episode. So I don't have to tell you again that they are the games that completely threw out the original formula that worked well and people were already excited for with this new with these new games, and they threw them out the window. You know, completely revamped, completely redesigned from the ground up, and it destroyed the quality of the game because they weren't fucking fun. And then there's other games like Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, which just wasn't kind of good. Um, the Mario and Sonic series, which, you know, not a lot of people have a lot of favor for. I haven't heard a lot of good things about that series, and considering there's fucking eight different titles for it. With the home console and the handheld version getting completely different ports of the damn titles. It was an era where Nintendo seemed to be stopped caring and it was frustrating, but that was with the games. The company itself was kind of fine, and in trying to win back its um, old established fan base, they were kind of falling down at every hurdle, and it was pretty embarrassing. Now we're getting into 2016 and 2017, and you know, the whole debacles about the NES and the SNES minis being completely impossible to find and people having to put up how-to guides just to find the damn things and how Nintendo has responded to it and 
failed to back up those responses and promises. The whole thing with the Switch and its stupid vocal app thing and how screwed up it is. It's continued non-understanding of how the internet works and its attitudes towards fan games and emulation. There's a certain emulation site on the web, and it's um, a pretty important one, that I'm going to assume that a lot of people don't go to, simply because that emulator site has been completely ransacked by Nintendo. Totally destroyed by Nintendo. Every Nintendo game has been taken off of that site. It's the only one that's been affected by this, which is why it's kind of odd. Because you can go to stuff like Love ROMs, Cool ROMs, at Emu Paradise is my premier one, and find these games. On this one other site, you can't. And it's one of the, you know, top Google search results, so I can't imagine that it's been beneficial for them. I mean, if you can't find a whole sect of games from a company on that site, you're gonna go to a different one because they actually have everything. But I'm getting off track. Their attitude towards the internet and their attitudes towards what their consumers will accept is unacceptable. That's the thing. This stuff isn't offensive, it's unacceptable. It's completely unbelievable that Nintendo is pulling this shit with this NES Mini twice and developing another era of Nintendo shittiness four years after it got back up on its feet with games like Super Mario 3D World and Treasure Tracker and those Wii U games that were kinda good and they were, you know, overall good and decent. They didn't have fucking bullshit scandals. They weren't doing bad things. But now it's turning over, and that could be possibly explained by Nintendo garnering favor again, the Switch becoming popular. You know, the whole Breath of the Wild thing bringing back the fans, so they got more comfortable and complacent. It's still unacceptable because they're doing the same shit with the NES Mini as the SNES Mini after they promised that this wasn't going to happen and they already admitted that the problem that they had with the SNES Mini before any of this happened, so having it happen all over again is completely baffling and can only be explained by the company's incompetence. There is no way that they were blindsided by this bullshit. There's no way. And if you want to say, oh, you know, they probably don't have the resources again, well, they have the resources to produce the Switch in massive fucking quantities. There isn't no more scalping business on that because Nintendo can't help out their scalpers anymore. Everyone's already got a fucking Switch. And then on the other hand, you got all the Amiibos they're still fucking making. I'm sure they're still making one for Smash Brothers on the Wii U if they want to bring out the stupid dongle to have Amiibos on the 3DS at whatever point. I don't know if it's out yet. And then there's the fucking entire line of 3DSs. From the 2DS to the 3DS to the new 3DS to the 2DS XL that's going to come out to all this other random fucking nonsense. You're gonna tell me that they don't have the fucking lack of resources to fucking make the SNES Mini one that's been hyped up, a product that has everybody's eye on it, when you could just downsize the 3DS, make the fucking room for something that isn't so in demand because they don't have the fucking resources to have everything they fucking want at the same goddamn time. They are a fucking company that's been in gaming for over 30 flippin' years. And I know that they've had executives up and down, people have died. And you know, it's not the same company that it once was, obviously. But they have the fucking backbone and veteran status to where this isn't a surprise and it can only be explained by deliberate stupidity or ignorance or whatever the hell they have deals with scalpers to continue having the motivation to do this stupid bullshit. They have the fucking knowledge to project profit margins, to do a fucking estimate, to do a feasibility measurement on if this is possible. You cannot tell me that they don't have the ability to ship more than fucking 12 copies of this product to every local fucking store in the fucking America state. Oh, and that whole thing where they're treating the PAL and the US regions differently and prioritizing one over the other to where the fucking PAL regions have gotten this access to pre-orders two months ahead of America is the fucking bullshit of why Nintendo doesn't understand what it's doing. 
Because it's prioritization. It's not fucking impossibility. It's not fucking export taxes and shipping costs that they have to worry about anymore. It's a global fucking marketplace. You know, it's a brand new fucking world, so even that's not a goddamn excuse. There's no stigma against Japanese products unless you're in a goddamn country song world. But what do you have to say to fucking that? You know, what happens when this prioritization seeps down and trickles down and the PAL regions and Japan get more fucking units than the US market? to where there probably is more fucking demand. There might be more people involved in it. You know, why are you prioritization everyone differently when they all have the same access to money? And if you want to think that the fucking answer is how everybody's economies are doing globally, then what the hell are you even in this argument for if you're pulling out such petty excuses? And you might think that I'm being petty and shit, but, at the end of the day, when Nintendo has to have a separate company develop a phone app for you to have a fucking voice line through a headset into the goddamn Switch, into the internet, in an age when the 360 has been doing that for five years, do you really want to say that it's acceptable? Do you really want to see Nintendo continue to do this? You know, it's like the thing with microtransactions and all the other company bullshit where people say you have to say with your wallet. And if you buy into it, then they'll do it more. Which is why you have to continue the conversation. You have to keep saying to companies who do this shit to stop it. Because if you accept it and you say, oh, you shouldn't care about that, well, they'll continue doing it because they see that people don't care about it and it's not hurting them in any way. Of course, it's not gonna hurt them. They have their fucking slab of meat on their table. They have their cut. The SNES Classic is going to be a huge fucking success, and the Switch, with how it's doing, is going to be able to slag off any criticism about its goddamn focal app stupidity and other things that people complain about, because people are buying the product. Because people are buying in. And people are saying, oh, if you complain, well, you're a hater, or you're a fanboy, and you defend it. No, these are things that are blatantly unacceptable. This isn't like, oh, you know, I hate this game because it doesn't have, I don't know, a, a story mode or a multiplayer mode, and it's stupid, and I hate the character's voice. Well, those are subjective things, but this is more objective. It's not 100% objective, but it's a more objective unacceptability than other ones. And just to bring the example forward, if a company like Square Enix or Ubisoft or even Bungie was doing the same shit and, oh, we didn't have the resources to manufacture enough Destiny 2 or Shadow of War or Assassin's Creed Origin Disc or whatever the fucking AAA game of the day is whenever you watch this video, if we did have enough resources or the ability to manufacture enough units, we wouldn't even be having this fucking conversation. The only reason we're having this conversation is because this is Nintendo. And for some reason, when Nintendo fucks up and does deliberately anti-consumer things, people give it a slide. People give it a fucking slide. Nintendo doesn't deserve a slide. Nintendo has the same fucking ability to be a massive dickhead to everybody as any other fucking company. Because these corporations are not your friends. They don't care about you. They, don't know, they aren't actually looking down to you and saying, Oh, we're going to give you everything you want and it's going to be a brand new, bright, sparkly world if you give us your money and allow us to have your trust. Oh, it's going to be so good. That doesn't happen. Nintendo is not your fucking friend. They don't actually care about you. At the end of the day, you're the bottom line. You're their fucking revenue stream. Of course they have to be nice to you. Of course they have to put up that completely fake, oh, Reggie is a cool character, and oh, look, Miyamoto is wearing a silly mask and doing a bit with Iwata or whoever. Of course they have to do that. That's PR. That's public relations stuff. You know, that's them putting on a nice face to sell their product. 
Of course they have to do that. That's what every corporation does. That's what E3 is all fucking about. And at the end of the day, at the end of the fucking event, they aren't going away and saying, oh, we did a great job. And oh, those people are going to be so happy with our product. No, they're saying about their numbers. They're saying, oh, people were excited. We're going to get so many pre-orders. Those people think you're stupid. Those people think that you'll buy anything. And the stretches are examples that we've seen time and time again. The stupid bullshit with the Metal Gear Solid 2, oh, it's Solid Snake, but it's really Raiden bullshit. Killzone 2, and it's fucking, you know, it's fucking difference between the advertising and the real thing. The, even the most recent stuff, Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed Unity, fucking Colonial Marines, the famous examples. There's B-list examples that are out there where people said one thing and they actually meant another one. There's everything under the sun to disprove that everyone at E3 likes you and that you should be excited about everything because there are always examples of it not turning out great. Of them thinking that their customers will accept anything so they can not try harder or they can patch it later or any other bullshit. Nintendo is not above that. Nintendo is not above that standard. They put out Sticker Star and thought that people did not like the fucking plotting and story of a fucking RPG. They actually thought that and someone backed them up. They found some bullshit statistics to back them up where they got a 0% fucking measurement. 0%s do not actually happen in a fucking poll. Unless you have like the D's nuts option on it where three idiots managed to put their fucking vote. That's where it doesn't matter. So, since I'm getting off topic here, I'll set it up in conclusion. What Nintendo is doing with the SNES Mini is not, you know, offensive to some, but you really shouldn't care about it. Oh, it's Nintendo and you should accept it. Oh, you know, they promised, or they don't have the resources, or the money's tight, or they don't have the budget, or they don't have the manufacturing complex, or whatever, whatever, whatever. It's bullshit. Whatever they say, it's bullshit. They saw this coming, they did this shit with the NES Mini already, and even with the NES Mini, oh, they could kinda say that it was, you know, unexpected. This is expected. They saw this coming, and you can't tell me that they didn't. No company does blind fucking options. No company has no market research. Nintendo knew this was coming and did not do anything about it. And we should continue to complain about Nintendo because it's still doing shitty things that if any other fucking company would be doing would not be defended. It would be hastily arbitrated. It would be aggravated. It would be annihilated by every commenter on the fucking planet. If Ubisoft or Electronic Arts or Naughty Dog or Platinum Games or Grip Tonight or whoever in control of its manufacturing was doing the same bullshit. If Microsoft had originally launched Xbox Live on the Xbox with this phone app bullshit in some hypothetical world where the Xbox came out in 2014, if Sony was doing this artificial console exclusivity with the PS4 or PS4 Pro or the Xbox One S for Microsoft, we wouldn't be even having this discussion. Nintendo does not deserve a slide. It does not deserve slack. It fucked up in a way that is deliberate and incredibly stupid to continue thinking that people are gonna pay out the ass for $600 for one of their products and that they're gonna immediately sell out. Well, that's not true, of course it's gonna fucking happen. But they continue to think that people are gonna accept that and that they can offer their back of the hand, oh, we meant this, but we meant that, excuses by the end of it when they've already made all their fucking money. Nintendo doesn't deserve the slack. It doesn't deserve people forgetting that the creator program is still a thing. It doesn't deserve the fucking, you know, lack of memory for it denouncing goddamn fan-made games and deterring them from getting awards on it or getting recognition or allowing them to make any money on a fucking fan game and for them advancing their careers on something they probably spend more than three years making by themselves. They don't deserve slack for any of it because their bullshit avarice and cynical fucking stupidity and deliberate ignorance of the world around them will eventually hurt them in the end. They shouldn't have all the fucking PR points at this fucking stage. 
They shouldn't be able to go up on E3 and say, oh, everything's wonderful and fine. Oh, we're going to announce three other products, and you better fucking pre-order them because we're Nintendo. They don't deserve the slack, so stop giving it to them. Treat them like any other corporation pulling this shit would, and denounce them for it. Continue to grease your wheels, and hopefully they'll stop doing this shit. Because when you defend it, or when you don't care about it, it grows. And it grows because there isn't any resistance to it. Why do you think microtransactions have fucking gotten out of hand? It's because of GTA 5. GTA 5 made half a billion dollars on microtransactions. And every other chancer, every other bullshit fucking idiot behind their marketing that has put microtransactions in these huge ass games, turning a $120 purchase into a $215 purchase, they're chasing that dream. They want the microtransactions to come for them. And they will because it still has market share. So stop it. And that's how you fight corporate bullshit. You continue to grease your wheels. You continue to talk. You continue the conversation and you don't forget about it. And just for example, to end this video, I have not forgotten that Nintendo did not put in a story mode for Smash Brothers U because they were yelling about internet people sharing Smash Brothers Brawl's story mode. Yeah, they blamed the fans for not putting in a story mode. Except for any other legitimate reason. They chose the fucking fans as the target. So, just keep that in mind for if you think that Nintendo still cares about you and you're their personal best friend buddy. You're not. You're a dollar to them. And at the end of the day, they'll get theirs.